Okay, so here is a vlog of my first day traveling to my new life as a black expat. You could tell I was super excited. This is the flight from Atlanta to Cancun. When I got off the plane, I'm super mad that I didn't know that Uber doesn't work because I got scammed out of like $35 for a very quick ride. But anyway, when I got to my first hostel, the escalator was not working. So I had to lug all of my fucking luggage up those stairs. So when you first walk in, there are all these lockers where you put your belongings into. There's also community showers and here is what the actual sleep capsule room looks like i didn't expect it to be so dark and quiet but it was great the bed was comfortable i literally ended up sleeping for like 10 hours after i got some tacos from the restaurant downstairs and some Krispy cream donuts to remind me of home in the morning the hostel provided us with breakfast so i ate that before heading off to the airport to take my flight to mexico city anyway i had this bomb ass turkey sandwich when i got out of the airport and then i finally made it to my my Airbnb and here is a little tour. Hey y'all. <laughs> Today is my first full official day here in Mexico City and I'm so excited. Um very nervous at the same time though. Today on my agenda, I am going to get me some damn churros for sure. But before I do that, I'm going to go to this little cute cafe that I found um, that's like 30 minutes away from where I'm staying. And I'm going to like sit down and do, get some work done. <clears throat> um, because I don't know, when I be out of the country, one of my favorite things to do is just go to a cute cafe and just give the looks, give the vibes. Just cafe, just laptop book on the side that i'm not reading it's just there for aesthetic um waiter another chai latte please um that's just the whole vibe um i'm hoping to like meet people and shit like that um because i definitely want to uh discover more things to do well i know of some things to do but i want to like meet people to do them with like going out and stuff like that and uh i want to go to a fruit little fruit shop i don't know what they're called particularly but they're like a like family owned like fruit store the fruit that i'm gonna get here so excited so i'm gonna rack up i got my little my little reusable fruit bag and shit oh here's the outfit of the day i wish there's no full length mirror in this in this airbnb but i just got on this maxi denim skirt and um this white little crop tank top but regardless um let's go <laughs> So I be recording a lot of things vertically because I do a lot of Instagram reels and TikToks now, but I started off my day going to this place called Blend Station. It was this super cute cafe and they had th some of the best French toast I've ever had. And trust me, I am a French toast connoisseur, okay? And I also ordered this a vanilla chai, some, it wasn't chai. I don't know what it was. It was mid, wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> okay, so I just came back from that little cute reusable um eco-friendly store and i just wanted some lotion but they didn't have it <laughs> so i'm walking down this strip and i seen some cute ass clothing stores there's some cute stuff around here i also seen this um waffle spot it was called nasty waffles and uh <laughs> i feel like some of you guys already know where i'm going with this but they had those like penis waffles um penis waffles that was really what i saw i hope they got some vagina waffles or something um i'm not hungry now because that first toast was so fucking good but um i'm gonna see i don't know i'll probably see about it later on the driving down here is so fucking different <laughs> like oh my god bro this the airbnb i'm staying in it's like a 40 minute ride to this area that i'm in right now which is like the nicer area or nicer slash gentrified area. I've seen some people being upset about the fact that uh, like Mexico City was becoming gentrified with like Americans moving here for cheaper living and therefore it's raising the price of everything. And um, yeah, like there's like eight coffee shops like everywhere, like eight coffee shops on every block. <laughs> and 
I love me a good coffee spot, but I can't imagine being a local and being like, oh my God, a fucking another one. You know what I'm saying? But here's what I was talking about. These stores were really cute, but everything in there was really expensive. Um, yeah, so the rings and the jewelry was like no less than $67. And I don't need to be buying nothing else anyway. And the clothes they had in there were so freaking cute. But the purple set that I showed you guys, literally the top was like $245 USD. And I didn't even bother looking at the pants. I know it was probably worth it because everything in there looks handmade, but... I just know for a fact I don't need to put anything else in my suitcase. And then this part is funny. I ended up going to the fruit mercado that I was so excited about. And I ended up recording myself speaking Spanish. But literally, I started recording too late where all you can hear me saying is bien and okay. And I'm like, damn, I didn't even get none of the good uh, stuff to show you guys where I was actually speaking in full Spanish sentences. And then I look at the camera and I'm like all excited and shit. <laughs> but I got my fruit and it was a great experience. I, I loved it. It felt very authentic fresh fruit that the america the america uh america would piss in 500 feet back in tsa when you come back to america after being in another country they like put you through the screening and the last time i went through it all they asked is did you bring any snacks and i was like what <laughs> Like, what the fuck do you mean that I bring any snacks? Like, nigga, what? Like, that was just, it was just so awkward. Hold on, let me make sure I'm going the right direction. It was just so awkward, but yes. So, this whole bag of fruit, I got me some uvas, some mango. I forgot what watermelon is in Spanish, but uh, all of it came up to 132 pesos. And do you know what that is in American dollars? <laughs> it's six dollars. <laughs> all of this fruit for six doll hairs. That's the fan. Me just casually walking, and this is all I see. What kind of restaurant is this? What is this? OC Market, Organic Community Market. I have to look that up later. But there's pandas at the table. Anyways, yeah, this was my Mexican fantasy. This fruit right here in this this year bag. Um, I've never gotten to use this bag, and I'm so excited that I can finally use it to put some Mexican fruit into. <laughs> yes. So, just made it back to the Airbnb. That was an excursion. Um, but I realized it's only 2.40. <laughs> like, it's not even... The day is not even really done. Luckily, I just carried this gigantic thing of water. Mm. Agua. This um Airbnb is really nothing at all to write home about. Um it's pretty mid. And the location, that's what I was saying. Every like okay, so Condesa and Roma are two popular neighborhoods in Mexico City. And when I was doing research, those are the ones that people were like, you're gonna want to stay here because all the cafes and stuff like that are close to there and a lot of stuff is in walking distance which is literally where I went to the bookstore that I was at last the fruit shop um, there was tattoo places that waffle nasty waffle place everything that I really just showed you guys was in walking distance in that area so but all the Airbnbs were a little more expensive in that area but I really should have just got somewhere over there because um, I mean, what I'm not paying in Air in Airbnb, I am paying in Uber. My Ubers are like ten dollars. I mean, non ten dollars for like a forty five minute ride, which is dope. But I could just walk and avoid a forty five minute ride because these the traffic is crazy. It's like always traffic. It's never not any traffic. So yeah, but I'm about to drink my agua, beber. Bebo, Bebo Agua. <laughs> Why say it like that? Hold on. I said that with so much uncertainty. Some dude, uh, one of the guys at the clothing store, he was like, he was like, hola, and I responded and I said, hola, and then he started talking to me in English. 
And I was like, how did you know I was American? And he was like, you said Olaf with like uncertainty. And I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. Tomorrow is a holiday and tonight hella clubs are gonna be lit. So uh, I think I, I'm telling myself that I know for a fact that I should go out to a club in, in Roma, uh, but I, I would like to go with people. I ain't felt like leaving, but I wanted some fucking churros and my churros on the way. Ay, ay, ay. I'm in that position like, oh yeah. These shits are fucking fire, bro. <laughs> okay, so today is day two. Um, here's my outfit. So hopefully you guys can see it good enough. But I just came back from that cute ass restaurant. Really should have ate something a lot healthier. I couldn't even eat the second piece. Um, but right now I am walking to like this little shopping center. It's been almost a week since I've been here. Um, yesterday I didn't do anything at all. I sat in the house all day and ordered food. Um, it's been cold as fuck. It's cold and I'm mad as hell. I brought one jacket. Retrograde has actually been retrograding. Let's talk about that first. Because retrograde has honestly, authentically been a menace to society, to my reality. Um, of course, we already know communication and shit was gonna be off. But now I'm starting to understand how it is affecting me. It took me forever to find anybody like any kind of group of, you know, black people or just like expats that are just, you know, Americans here to that, you know, go and do events. It took me days to find people uh, who would lead me to some kind of event to possibly build community with. But thank God today I finally found, well, I got on Hinge, matched with somebody on Hinge. They put me in this queer black expat group chat and then today uh they sent the, a move and the weird thing is i know it's cold as shit but it's cold and it's like on and off raining and the event is outside so Let me start off by saying that this vegan taco restaurant had some of the best tacos that I've had during this whole journey. This shit was so good and this drink, I can't pronounce it. I think it's like Himakata or it's pronounced J-I something. I don't know, that shit was good though. And then after I went to this store called Happenings in Roma and all this stuff is linked in the description. So please do not get in my comment section asking, where was this place? Where was this what? Everything is in the description. Everything in there was from local artists. Um, and it was just like a place where they could go and put their stuff for sale. It was great. So we'll definitely, I definitely have to go back and get those cups that I was holding. Afterwards, I ended up going to that gay brunch that I told you guys about, and it was a cute little vibe. It ended up raining like really hard during the event, but like a hell of people were there and they just waited it on out. I was like, yeah, they party different down here. But <laughs> after that, I ended up getting some more vegan tacos and these were so good as well. Like everywhere was so fucking good. This was the best angle I could get. Cheers. So everything is very fresh here, which is something that I am not used to, sadly. But everything is so fresh here. Like all of the fruit and all of the fruit dishes that I've had, juices, like for example, when I went to that restaurant the other day, the brunch spot with the French toast, I was like deep fried. I had ordered uh, one a juice on the side, and this is my first time ordering juice in Mexico. And I don't know what I thought they were gonna serve me, but they served me exactly what it said on the menu. <laughs> so it was fruit juice, but it was like, I don't know why I, I was thinking like a smoothie, they were gonna make it a smoothie or something, but either way, I got um, Hugo. <laughs> 
and it was a mix of fruit and I think I had passion fruit mango and uh, strawberry and it was like so fresh that I didn't like it Do we see the problem? We see the problem. It was so fresh that I did not like it. And I sent it back. And um, they made me another one with different types of fruit. And I didn't like that one either. I didn't like it because I wasn't used to the taste of authentic, natural, real, non-GMO, organic, <laughs> fresh, fresh juice. <laughs> because I'm an American. <laughs> like that's crazy like not even the juice like I'm, i would make some really good juices with my juicer at my old apartment but they don't have they don't have they're like 15 percent off of the juice that you get here like you walk into the store you see they have just like the fruit that they're literally using just like on the little banister you can just see it they'll like literally pick it up and literally juice that shit right in front of you it's crazy to me okay so i'm not gonna say much about this experience but i would totally recommend it to absolutely everybody i really tested myself because uh it it was very much like a void like just floating in the middle of just complete pitch black darkness imagine doing that shit on acid or something yeah that shit was a void i understand how people be like hallucinating and shit like that in there but um you can play music and you can have the lights on so you don't have to do, to do it like how i did it but it was pitch black and it taught me a very prominent lesson about surrender because uh normally in situations like that i'd be fumbling for a light uh to turn on to have some kind of control like over my environment if i can't see anything then i'm not going to be able to know how to react if something were to happen but like no like just surrender just lay back just float and just allow, allow whatever comes up to come up and you can work through that shit yourself i was in there telling myself affirmations and things like that so uh i would 100 percent recommend that to everybody Okay, Hoy es. Hoy es martes. Y soy en el restaurante de vegan. <laughs> I'm at a vegan restaurant today, and it's Thursday, Tuesday. It's Tuesday today. Um, but the menu on this uh, at this restaurant looks superb. Um, I am like taken aback by how good everything looks. Um, and I just ordered some green enchiladas. I'm really trying to order different things everywhere I go because I really could have just got some pancakes. And she just brought me my smoothie. So it's mango, strawberry, and something else. I think it's like coconut cream or I think it's coconut cream or coconut water. Hola. So I've been getting asked a lot of questions about uh, my experience here so far um a lot of y'all like dm me on instagram and it's so funny because like apparently now well not apparently it's obvious that this is happening now i'm building a new audience and y'all are it's interesting because my audience of over a year has been people who knew me from shroom psychedelic content and now it's a whole bunch of black people who want to you know travel the world and shit like that it's so cool but it's i'm like wow like this is your first time like people are like hey I'm, ne I'm new to your channel but um how's mexico and i'm like you you didn't you didn't see the the infamous <laughs> what i was known for you know what i'm saying but anyway that's that's just evolution but adjusting here has i think you guys have already seen my ups and downs of adjusting here i literally came in the middle of the ret of a retrograde it is and i'm here during the rainy season so yeah i think that there's a handful of elements that just go into solo traveling already but for me personally today i was at that restaurant and i was like you know what i i am so proud of myself for actually having gone through this because I was walking down the strip and I was like, oh, wow, I'm really here by myself. Like, I'm really here by myself. Like, I have nobody to, like, look to and for them to be like, hey, you want to go into this store? It's like, no, like, I'm literally navigating this shit by myself. I go back to the Airbnb when I want to go. I can fucking fly on another plane to go to the, another part of Mexico. Like, just interesting shit like that. And I'm like, wow, like, this is really my reality. This is really my creation this is really my it's really my world but um 
It's gonna take getting used to, and I've done this before. I guess this is the longest I've done it, but when I traveled solo to Panama last year, I, that was me dipping my toes in the water. And honestly, to me, it does not feel difficult. Like, I just find shit that I wanna do and I go do it. I'm always find some good places to eat. I've been eating at a lot more vegan spots recently and love it. And then the fact that everything here is so cheap, I love it even more, you know? Like, we can get in an Uber. I found that, I got into a group chat. I think I told you guys, I got into a group chat for black queer expats in Mexico and um they're sending events in the chat frequently and everyone's nice and somebody frequent somebody yesterday just sent another flyer for a basically like a camping trip and if you know i'll put the video up but if you don't know what camping trip is check out this video because um it's actually a uh like an overnight festival a camping festival in mexico um where they're doing a whole bunch of psychedelics and it's like art and uh, just, you know, cool, creative shit like that. So that's on Saturday and I I am going to go. I'm saying I'm going to go, but I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with the Airbnb first. I get a tattoo on Thursday. Today is Tuesday, sadly. I, want, I wish she could get me in there earlier with her, but I get my tattoo on Thursday, so like I ain't moving nowhere until after I get the tattoo. Adjusting has been a lot better. Like today and yesterday were good days um, for sure. And I'm glad that I've gotten out and, and, and met people and things like that because you know, that made me feel better about the whole solitude situation myself. And I've been reading um, this book everywhere I go pretty much and it has given me some insight as well um just on this whole process that i'm undergoing and things like that um and yeah like i mean i i'm i'm chilling at this point like I'm, I'm very much accustomed to the fact that i'm here by myself and that's really what it is i can do whatever i want whenever i want and you know oh people were asking me about the hurricane that's what i meant to say earlier i didn't feel it i don't really understand how i didn't feel it the whole city was kind of like shut down for like a minute a good minute um and apparently it was the fourth year anniversary of like uh some major earthquake that happened four years ago in mexico and that's probably why it, it started off as a drill which is what was crazy the earthquake drill started and then a fucking earthquake actually happened so you know that was something different to experience I, like i said i don't understand why i didn't feel it i don't even know where i was everybody in the group chat said that they was like you know their house was shaking and shit the building was shaking i was like damn like that shit probably would have scared me but um yeah and then there was like a tsunami warning i yeah it's it's retrograde baby <laughs> right now i'm about to edit this video it's only 6 17 um to on today and I have no intentions on going back out. I'll probably Uber eat some shit and watch Vampire Diaries. But yeah, I hope that was a good answer to your questions. <laughs> Grand Rising to all of you divine uh, members of the collective. So this morning, I am, I've been reading this book. I keep showing to you guys, Women Who Run With The Wolves. It's a very interesting book and I wanna talk about it. Um, lots of enlightenment especially within myself. And it's, just, it's, 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 it's very nice because I knew from, I would say like August, late July, August, I knew that I was entering my I don't give a fuck era. It, and it already is proving to be a very enlightening era for me. I'm here doing this solo traveling shit and I've been reading and writing a lot more and I'm getting back into my breath work which is as equally important to me as every other practice that I do. I think I've made it pretty clear that a lot of my, a lot of my reality revolves around my divine femininity. Maybe I haven't said it as bluntly as that, but that's what, that's how I navigate. And this book is just so much of the embodiment of that. Basically, this book is a com compilation of short stories. It's myths and stories of the wild woman archetype. And the introduction basically talks about how women are synonymous with wolves in so many different aspects. W women and wolves are deeply intuitive, playful, spiritual, concerned with their young mates and pack experience in adapting, we're brave, etc. 
Um, so there's so many good traits, but we are also hounded, harassed, accused of being aggressive and devious by men. It's just, it's so enlightening. And this is how the book began. But one of the first stories is called La Loba, which means she wolf in Spanish. And I read it yesterday for the first time. And so I'm writing all of my notes this morning about it. And as I'm rereading it, it's it's a very interesting story so basically it's just about la loba she basically um travels throughout different aspects of life and parts of the world collecting bones In this story it's a wolf that she's uh, got collected all the bones for she uh assembles the bones into the shape of the body and then she sings over them and she breathes life into the bones and basically the animal comes back to life and runs off into the distance and the story is very interesting already but the symbolism with what it means it's a miracle story it's a resurrection story about the underworld connection to the wild woman like people would see la loba and of course perceive x y and z this hairy disheveled vagabond woman where's her husband <laughs> like you know what i'm saying like but like no like the wild feminine archetype is so i resonate with that shit so much because like if you need a better example or like a more modern example rico nasty bk the ruler fucking dochi but the part that i wanted to read to you in the book i'm probably not gonna read it exactly but it's it talks about um the southwest of the archetype of the old woman um of the I think of the story if I'm not mistaken it's called La Que Sabe which means the one who knows in Spanish and basically um, La Que Sabe knew everything about women um, and she created women from a wrinkle on the sole of her divine foot this is why women are knowing creatures they are made in essence of the skin of the soul which feels everything the idea that the skin of the foot is sentient had the ring of truth for an acculturated quiche i hope i'm not pronouncing that wrong tribes woman who once told me that she'd worn her first pair of shoes when she was 20 years old and was still not used to walking con los ojos vendados with blindfolds on her feet. What? I feel like that message went over some people's heads, but that's okay. Just re just rewind. <laughs> just buy the book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, I gotta get on my call, so I will hit y'all up later. So today is finally the day where I am getting my tattoo. I'm so excited. I don't even know if I told you guys what I'm gonna get, but you'll see. And I just pulled up. So this is the stencil, and I'm not really gonna go much into depth about what the tattoo means, cause I've, I feel like I've already expressed my relationship with my feminine energy throughout a lot of this video, <laughs> so. But this shit, was painful and it really wasn't painful at first the outline was fine it was just her shading over my already very sensitive and inflamed skin that had me like hold on whoa there wait a fucking minute um, i don't even have a picture of the full product to show you guys because i got sanoderm on right now you can go look at it on her instagram hello people is that better this is too bright I think this is good. Hello, people <laughs> of wherever, 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 wherever. Um, hey y'all, so today's the last day of this vlog. It's Saturday. This vlog needs to be up by tomorrow. Look at my outfit, it's cute. I got my clothes washed. I just got on some leggings and some, I feel, feel, I'm on my cycle. So yay, my cycle. Um, and I feel like I need to, if I'm going to be in public, I need to keep my energy within. So that's why I got on a lot more black today. Regardless, um, yeah, so today is the last day that I am going to be filming my Mexico adventures. I'm going to be traveling somewhere else um, sometime this week. I am still deciding where. So um, hopefully by the time, yes, by the time this video comes out, I will have the destination. <laughs> um, but other than that, 
I wanted to, um, what do I want to say? I wanted to say something. I've been having so much on my mind, so much on my spiritual, my mental, my emotional, and I'm probably going to start crying. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I think the main thing that I wanted to kind of uh, conclude was what I was talking about uh, like three days ago, to me it's three days, to y'all it's probably like three minutes ago, three seconds ago. Um, what I was talking about with the book that I was reading and it all wraps up to my intentions on me being here traveling in general. My intentions for traveling the world, there were a few, but my main one was that I wanted to get back into reading and writing as much as I used to do it because I'm a poet for y'all who are new here. Um, I've been a poet for 10 years. <laughs> In November, it will make 10 years <laughs> that I've been a poet. I mean, I've been a, a creative my whole life, been a writer my whole life, but poetry found me in a very um, dark and depressive time almost exactly 10 years ago, which is Whoa, it's fucking crazy. Um, I feel like this is a homecoming of self. I feel like every stage of my life is like that, but in very different ways, differently prominent ways. And in this way, my reading, my writing, they're hitting me like directly where it is that they need to hit me, you know? In my, in my third eye, in my heart chakra, in my yoni space. While I'm here, while I'm navigating this earth that we literally live on, this shit is fucking crazy. Um, and I think that even through the navigation of that, there's already been so much more to learn. Like, even through the physical act of navigation, safety, for example, um, Leaning more into myself to listen to my intuition, to tell me yes, to tell me no, to tell me right, or to tell me left. And from there, understanding that not everybody is going to have the same frame of mind in, inside of what is good and what is bad, what is right and what is wrong. And I've been hit with like... I'm not gonna say a rude awakening, but like, cause it could have been, it could have been worse. Like something actually could have happened to me where I would have been like, and oh my God, like safety is something that I need to actually take into account. Nothing like that happened, but from what I've read in the book and um, just, you know, just things, stories that I've heard about in the media, I, at first I felt like people were like trying to, I don't want to say fear mongering because that's a little that's a little serious of an allegation but like I felt like people were trying to create fear where it didn't need to be created like for me I navigate out of my heart space I navigate just as me like as authentically me as possible so because I'm like that whenever I come across people who are not it's not always immediately prominent to me and so with me traveling and doing this shit solo, I, I'm fucking scared to say that now, but me doing this shit in the state that I am doing it, um, I've had to come to the understanding from this book that like there are predators out here. Like there are people who are pro probably are not, they are not of human like they are even though they might look human and talk human and walk human and they're not fucking human or shit some of them are and they really are actually fucked up you know they really are just predators um like that has been like a realization because i was raised by a people pleaser so like i wasn't taught like how to lean into my intuition enough to establish a boundary which is something that like it is it would be handy at this point in time in my life you know what i'm saying so um yeah it's um it's been a very big reflection on my childhood like putting a, a, a just some glasses on or just like a magnetizing glass just like over just like okay this is a situation that we've already you know covered but 
you, you, you know we could go a little deeper. Like, damn, nigga, like, is it not done? No, it's not over. Like, we're still, we are still in this bitch. <laughs> like, we are still, we are still learning and healing and from shit that we already thought that we learned and healed from. Bitch, it's not over. <laughs> so, you know, I, I have to laugh about it because, I mean, it is funny and, and to be quite frank with you it is life like this is just life like i'm just i'm just grateful to be at this point of where i'm at so yeah <laughs> uh other than that yeah i really hope that you guys enjoyed this video um oh if you want to support me on my travels you can subscribe to my only fans um or you can buy some merch from my brown girl the brand collection um, what else can you do to support a real nigga? You can just cash at me, shit. Or you can just send me some love. I don't know. You can fucking be a divine masculine. I don't know. Like, you can just, yeah, actually, yeah, just, just give me money. Anyways, um, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Always remember to comment, like, subscribe, same as always. And you guys will see me in the next video.